Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock Tio Studio. It's June 2019 and I need to combine my full moon art and my animal portrait for this month into one piece of art because I didn't, I was sick during the full moon and I didn't get my full moon art done and I also wanted to do an animal portrait as well. These are both monthly things that I do on my channel um, since January I've been making both a, f a named full moon art piece and an animal portrait piece each month but of course this is the ATC a day challenge in June and I've been doing ATCs like crazy and making videos for those too so there's been plenty of content this month on my channel and so you're going to get a double up here. Uh, this this uh, video is almost 30 minutes long, which is longer than I normally make. But if you think, okay, 20 minutes for the moon and 20 minutes for the animal, then you're actually getting a, getting a little bit of a reduction in, in time. So I hope that you guys will watch this. I know that people don't like to watch long videos, um, but I hope that you will. So for this month, the moon was the strawberry moon. And the reason it's called that is because it's... Um, well, the Native Americans in North America named it Strawberry Moon because of the, the fresh, ripe, wild strawberries that started to bloom around this time. It also has some other names from other places in the world. Some old European names for this full moon are the Honey Moon or the Mead Moon, also Full Rose Moon, and uh, I also heard that it was called the hot moon, which would um, be what it should be called in Arizona. Let me tell you, it's been hot, hot, hot. So the full moon this month did fall on Father's Day, and it was uh, the 16th and the 17th. I know it's almost the end of the month, and I'm just now getting my art done. So the other thing that I wanted to put in my art is my animal portrait, and this month I'm featuring an animal that I see frequently here in Arizona on the back of, of my house behind the, the um, backyard, there's a thing called a wash. And a wash is basically a dry river that only has water in it during the monsoon season, which is coming up, um, supposed to be in July here, it's going to be late. Uh, in the monsoon season, we get crazy amounts of water and that thing, that wash back there will fill up with water. So the washes are everywhere and they are for runoff so that we don't get flooding. And they're, natu they're naturally occurring. And when they built the houses, they just built them around them so that we don't get houses being flooded. So anyway, back to the javelina. The javelina is a very stinky, uh, pink, pig-looking animal. But it is not a pig or a hog. It is sometimes called the collared peccary. And there are other types of peccaries, apparently. Um, it has a pig-like nose. It has short legs and coarse um, brown, black, and white salt and pepper fur on it, like very coarse, like so coarse that it stands up. And it stands up around the back of its head, and that's the reason it looks like a, a collar. Um, they live in families in the washes, and they are mostly nocturnal. They come out at night, so it's a good thing to have javelinas in this this picture that I'm painting because it's nighttime and they would they would come out on a full moon. They are are very limited in sight. Like they don't see well. They're not blind, but they don't see well. They have small eyes and so they can get startled and since they live kind of in little herds uh, so most most of the time, if you startle them they might charge you. But they're not dangerous. They don't have any tusks or anything like a wild boar. Um, I guess it could slam into you if it was dumb enough. But uh, <laughs> we have these all over the place, even here in the city. So they just live out there in the wash and, and we ignore each other. Um, they will, however, eat your flowers. If you plant something that seems nice and juicy and they can get to it, they'll eat it. So they're kind of bratty that way. So this particular uh, paper pad is from Arteza. It's called acrylic paper. 
it's not made out of acrylic. It's supposed to be for acrylic painting. And so far, I haven't really painted with acrylic on it, particularly. I've used gouache. I've uh, used collage. I've done, I mean, I've done, you know, acrylic usually comes into my mixed media pieces at some point, but I haven't made a complete acrylic painting. So I thought that's what I was going to do here. So I made the drawing using my mechanical pencil and my white eraser, and I drew everything that I wanted in the picture. And then I started to paint, and I'm using Deco Art Media Fluid Paint. This is a professional grade paint. It's got highly pigmented, um, thin, paint. So I am using it somewhat in sort of a watery way by using a couple different sizes of these Arteza water tank brushes. Um, one of them is a flat and I use it for almost all of it because it, it covers the paper a lot faster. And the other one has got a round pointed tip. It's the smallest size. These came in a set of um, six, probably six of them in different sizes, three different flats and this is the smallest flat and then three different sizes of round brushes as well and I think this is the smallest of the three round brushes so they have water in the barrel um, I can squeeze the little valve where that red part of the the brush is I can squeeze it to get out water and I'm kind of diluting this paint and it it stands up to this very well um, it doesn't have any problem with getting diluted because it's really got a lot of pigment. It doesn't, it makes it slightly more translucent, but not a lot. Of course, just like any professional grade paint, some of the colors are more translucent than others. And um, the most opaque being the titanium white. It's very opaque and I'm using a lot of it. So I, as I've gone through and edited, I've added the colors as I'm bringing them out. The first two colors that I was using for most of this is uh, Payne's Gray, which is a very dark grayish navy color, and then Quinacridone Gold, which is a color that is just the most versatile thing you could possibly imagine. And when you mix Payne's Gray and Quinacridone Gold, you get this kind of grayish brown that I'm using for the shadows on the mountains. Um, not doing a lot of detail, uh, just you know, trying to give the impression that there are mountains out there. When I did finally see the full strawberry moon, it was actually past the two days that it was completely full, but it was the next day after that because, like I said, I was ill. Um, I was out on the soccer field, and we don't usually use the soccer field in my town. We usually have to drive somewhere. But we have this beautiful one that's like has a perfect view of the Push Ridge Mountains. And, I mean, that... That park is like the perfect place you would want to live. <laughs> it just overlooks. And so we're sitting out there watching uh, soccer and the moon rose up over those mountains. And then shortly after that, there was a herd of javelinas in the ditch. <laughs> and you could, you could hear them and you could kind of also smell them because they're pretty stinky. But um, so that's what inspired my art. It's like this, this, uh, idea of the the moon rising and and the javelinas and I didn't put the soccer field in there um, <laughs> I guess I could have made a soccer field with the moon rising and a javelina coming out of the ditch and chasing the the ball or something that would have been kind of cute I guess um, maybe I, that's what I should have done but I was trying to go for something a little bit more normal so um, as like I said as the as I'm getting out another color, I'm adding it um, as a caption so that you can see which colors I used. I got out a couple different greens, uh, green gold, and um, what was the other one? Something yellow green, fallow yellow green, green yellow, which is a darker color. And I'm still using the quinacridone gold and the Payne's gray and the titanium white to mix in with the other colors. Um, about the only type of strawberry looking thing that we have in Arizona that's that even reminds me of a strawberry at all is a prickly pear plant and we have some prickly pears I know you all think that they're green and most of them are and the one the one that I'm doing right now is green but we also have some that are purple and also some that are kind of red and 
of course, they've got spines on them all over them like a strawberry seed. They're kind of that same shape, um, pointed on one end and then rounded on the other end, um, although the, it's usually upside down <laughs> from what a strawberry would be. Um, and so of anything that we have that grows in the desert, that's, that's the thing that reminds me of most of the strawberry. It's not a strawberry. They do have fruit and the fruit is red with little white dots on it. And it has a, a kind of a, um, well, you know, it starts as a flower and then it grows into this fruit. And so at the top, it has a little bit of a green bit or it turns brown eventually before you pick them. Um, so those kind of look like strawberries too, although they're much darker reddish purple color. So you can pick them if you want to use them in any type of, of cooking or anything or making, a lot of people make jelly out of them um, and candy and stuff like that. They have kind of a sweet citrusy sort of a taste, a uh, little bit of a weird aftertaste. But um, in order to pick them and use them, you can take like a, what do you call that? A, it, it's a kitchen tool that has a flame, like for bruleing. A kitchen torch, maybe that's what it's called, the kitchen torch. You can take the kitchen torch and just like go all around and burn off all the little spines, spiky things. It has like the little teeny, teeny, tiny spines that you can hardly even see, but you can certainly feel them if they get in your skin. <laughs> they hurt. <laughs> so you may not even, and then you can't even see it, and you're trying to get it off. Um, yeah, they're, they're, annoying. So if you burn those off, then it's pretty easy to pick them and then um, blanch them and peel the skin off and then use the, the meat on the inside to make stuff. Um, they also have some seeds, of course, but the javelina love to pick the prickly pear fruit and even the prickly pear, pa pear pads, which are also edible. They're sometimes called nopales and um, Mexican food you can sometimes get Mexican food that has nopales in it, which kind of tastes like celery, sort of. It's a green fruit, and that's the pad of this plant. So same same way to pick it, you got to burn off the spines. Otherwise, you'll be sorry and sad <laughs> when you have a handful of spines. <laughs> and then you peel them and cut them up, slice them up, and uh, put them in Mexican food. So yeah, nopales, that's prickly pear. So I'm continuing to color these. I've got uh, a couple different colors of green. I've got the white and I've got some uh, still using the Payne's Gray to blend in, still using a little bit of the quinacridone gold. Those are just great blender colors. Then over here, so, so the one I put in the center is the one I was talking about that's kind of reddish colored. Um, it does have green and then, then the center part of the pad turns reddish. And then we also have one that has kind of almost a teal green and purple together. And one time I was at a nursery and they did explain to me that the reason that the prickly pear, you can get the different colors of prickly pears, it has to do with what's in the soil. And um, some things will change. Like if the soil has a lot of lime, it'll change into, into a purple or red prickly pear. So just because you buy it that color doesn't mean it'll necessarily stay that color. Um, my mom was looking, she wanted a purple one in her yard. And so we were looking at the nursery, the cactus nursery, and they're like, well, you know, I can sell you one, but you'll have to make sure that you, that it has the right nutrition in order to uh, stay this color because it'll just turn back to green. So I was walking around the other day uh, after my doctor's appointment, there's like a levee behind my doctor's office and I walked around and I saw probably maybe even four or five different very unique looking prickly pear with different colors. So there must be a lot of different minerals in that ground by that wash. So, so this is the, the purest purple one that has the kind of teal colored uh, leaves at the bottom. And 
So I'm giving you a variety of prickly pear and a picture of the Pushridge Mountains and the Starberry Moon. And then I'm going to do my javelina here pretty soon. I've got a mama javelina and two babies. One of the babies is looking up at the moon. It's moon gazing. Um, in the spring, the, the, the Starberry Moon was the last full moon of the spring because then the summer solstice happens on the 21st which has also passed, but um, <laughs> I would have talked about that had I got my <laughs> my stuff done on time. The summer solstice came, it's the beginning of summer, so in the spring is when the Havilene have babies. So that's the reason that I put a couple little babies there. They do live in herds, I don't know if I said that. So there could be a daddy around somewhere, um, the male of the species being larger than the female, but and probably the one that would charge you if you startled it. Although although mother animals are often very uh, protective of their babies too, so that could be as well. So I started painting my javelina with just the Payne's gray and a little bit of um, titanium white to give kind of a grayscale undertone there. And then I add in some browns by mixing the Payne's gray with the quinacridone gold again. Uh, I didn't actually get out a brown, surprisingly. Um, no burnt umber or anything like that. I was just using the combination of the Payne's Gray and the Quinacridone Gold the whole time to make brown because I wanted it to be a cool color and that makes a very nice cool color. So adding shading and then um, warming it up with some of these brown tones in uh, different mixes to give to give it the color it would be pretty darkish um, if you were to see it from a distance you'd probably say it was dark brown uh, but when you see it up close and i've seen plenty of them up close they do have a lot of like little white highlights or light tan colored highlights in the the fur which almost looks it almost looks like spines like a porcupine um, it's very, very spiky looking fur, but it is fur. It's not, it's not spines. It's just very coarse. Um, I don't know why they have a pig nose. I, I mean, I, I do know why. They use it to root, to like, you know, dig up stuff. They dig up the plants and put their little nose underneath there to dig things out. But if it's not related to a pig or a hog, I don't know why it has that type of a feature. It's kind of weird. Because people do think they're wild pigs or wild boars, but they're not. Completely different animal. Cannot breed with a pig or a hog. Um, it's not a rodent either. I'm not sure exactly what it, what category it falls under. I could guess I could look it up, but I didn't. But when I first moved here, I thought, oh, they're wild pigs. No, they're not. <laughs> Found that out pretty quick when I went to the Desert Museum, which is actually more like a a zoo, although it's called the Desert Museum, it's really a zoo. Um, first thing I learned is they're not pigs. Big sign. We are not pigs. So I'm just continuing to color. Um, yeah, I know that this is is taking a long time. Believe me, it took f over four hours to do it. So I know almost five hours to do it. So I know that it took a long time. And that's just today. I started the drawing a different day. So you might even say that it was more like five and a half or five hours. I don't know. Anyway, it, it, this was a long process. So now I've got out some diorlide yellow for the centers of the flowers. Um, the flowers that grow on the prickly pears in my yard are pink. And I wanted to continue with the, the you know, strawberry color type of an idea. There are also some that have yellow and some that have white. And um, I think those are only the colors I've seen are yellow, white, or pink flowers that then turn into dark pinkish purple fruit in the fall. So that's when the javelinas really like them. They like to get them. <laughs> They'll eat, uh, they'll eat the vegetable part anytime, the pads, but then, boy, do they like to get the fruits when the, when the fruits come out. And the birds, too. 
the birds land on them and peck holes into them. So if you really do want to use them for cooking or candy making or something, you need to get out there and get them before they get pecked or stolen. <laughs> the flowers were the most fun part, I thought, of this. I enjoyed painting the flowers. I'm using the tiniest brush now, and it's just, I don't know, I like painting flowers. So now I'm adding some of that yellow and some of the pink, which is primary magenta, by the way. I, I, I know it came across, but I didn't see it. Um, in the moon and also into the mountains as well. I want to get a little bit of that pink color because it's the strawberry moon. In here where I saw the moon, it didn't look pink, but I did had see some seen some photos, particularly one very beautiful photo of the moon rising over Mount Hood in Oregon, that it did look pinkish. So I guess sometimes it does have that color in it depending on the atmosphere and everything. Ours didn't look pink though. Ours just looked kind of goldish, goldish, brownish, whitish, the color of the normal moon. So I, I toyed with the idea of leaving these flowers white because I thought that might look nice, but I changed my mind and went with the pink. In my yard, the prickly pears, and I think we probably have six or seven plants. One of them is the, the plant between my house and the neighbors that's a prickly pear is about 10 or 12 feet tall. And it we call it the ancient cactus because I'm sure that it was there. They built the houses around it. You know, they didn't move it. And it's it is hundreds of years old, I'm sure because it's it's so old that part of it doesn't even have spines anymore and they've been worn off and they don't grow back and they the pads are really large like probably three some of them are as big as three feet around so now I've got out my Prismacolor picture <laughs> picture my Prismacolor pencils set and these are just regular waxy colored pencils this is where this piece becomes a mixed media because now I went from acrylic to pencil. I uh, wasn't planning on it. I was planning on going 100% acrylic, but I wanted to add some textury looking stuff so that you could see that this animal has coarse textured hair and it just wasn't working with the acrylic. I mean, I would spent, could have spent a lot of time making painting little teeny tiny lines or whatever, mixing a lot of different colors and painting. And I just, uh, this is getting long. It's going to take forever to even edit this. I don't want to take that long. So that's when I got out the pencils. I have a lot of colored colors of colored pencils in this box. It has three trays. It was like the biggest set that you can buy. And I asked for it for Christmas a few years ago. I got it for Christmas and then hardly ever use it. But they are a very good quality pencil. Um, the leads don't break. And I haven't really sharpened them yet, so I'm not sure how well they sharpen. But I got out different colors of tans, grays, taupe, um, a little bit of a skin tone-ish type pinkish color. And I'm just making short strokes and starting with a dark color and then moving in to some lighter colors, moving in to even lighter colors and making little, little strokes of hair or fur um, on this javelina and then I of course moved to the two smaller ones. Similar technique, similar colors. Um, I make the babies a little bit lighter than the mother because they are lighter colored and then they you know they age over time. I'm not sure I just have this idea in my head that the javelina skin underneath the fur is black. I think I learned that. Uh, to keep them cooler, to keep the heat, you know, off them. For some reason, that actually doesn't make sense. But I just have this idea that the skin is, is very dark black underneath the, the hair. 
I hope I'm right. I hope I'm not giving you bad information. It just seems like I read that. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't actually prepare for this video. I didn't look up stuff so that I would sound smart because that would just be silly. So then I'm using the pencils to kind of fill in some of the background as well and add a little bit of something to the mountains. I don't know that I really like how that came out, but it's okay. You can blend these pencils with something called Gamsol. I'm not sure exactly what it is. It doesn't smell good. I do have some, but you can take some of uh, that and you can blend the pencil with it. And I probably would be more happy if I blended the pencils because in some areas on the background where I used it, it looks very scratchy. The paper is textured. It's supposed to be like a canvas. It's called acrylic paper. I don't know. It's supposed to be like, it's, you know, it's very textured. And so the pencil gliding over it doesn't make a smooth line. It, it's bumpy and scratchy looking. So in some areas, I don't really appreciate that. And maybe I should have got the gamsel out and tried to blend it, but ugh, I was over it. Maybe I'll do it later. <laughs> I just knew that the editing process was going to be crazy and I just, I wanted to be done, but I probably will go back at some point and maybe do a little bit of small amounts of mod modification, maybe. Maybe try to blend the pencils, get out that gamsel and see if I can blend. I'm not sure if it will or won't over the acrylic. So then my final touch was to add some spines with my white Posca pen. Um, it's not a piece of my art if I didn't use a Posca pen, right? <laughs> and also I used a fan brush to splatter stars into the sky with the leftover titanium white paint. Um, and that was about it, I think. I don't think I did anything else. I guess we'll find out as the video rolls. There are close-ups at the end. And of course, I, took, I went outside and took the pictures by putting my book onto a prickly pear cactus. So you will see cactus in the background of the pictures because that just seemed appropriate. So that is it for me and your close-ups are coming up. Thanks. Bye-bye. Oh yeah, and like, comment, share, subscribe, all those things I forgot to tell you. Um, that always helps. I hope you watched it all the way to the end. Bye-bye.